Okay. Now I want to call this All meeting right. of the Carpentersville Village Board to order. Okay. Uh, I gotta keep looking. Acting Clerk, would you please read the roll or call the roll? President Ritter. Here. Trustee Schultz. Here. Trustee Rayburn. Here. Trustee Savvy. Here. Trustee Humphrey. Here. Trustee Stevens. Here. Trustee Burroway. Here. Okay. Uh, we uh, will rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for an invocation from, it says Pastor Partridge, but it's actually Pastor Phil Zielinski. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Phil. Lord, as we've uh, gathered here tonight, we think of all the activities going on outside, and we think especially of our communities and their safety tonight. Lord, we thank you for those who work in the village to protect us and serve this village in so many different ways, and we ask that you continue to keep them safe in their duties, no matter what job that may be. And we also pray tonight that this board would have wisdom as they guide this village into the future. And we pray this. Amen. <coughs> we have no procla proclamations, congratulatory resolutions, or awards, no appointments, confirmation, confirmations, or administrations of oath. Uh, the clerk, the acting clerk tells me we have no public comment this evening, which means we're ready for consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of those items unless the trustee so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Any items to be removed? A motion to pass the consent agenda. Oh, second. second. Motion Paul, second Kevin. Uh, ter excuse me. Acting <laughs> clerk, please call the roll. <laughs> trustee Burroway. Yes. Trustee Stevens. Yes. Trustee Humphrey. Yes. Trustee Savvy. Yes. Trustee Rayburn. Yes. Trustee Schultz. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Reports of managers, officers, commissions, and staff. Mark. Actually, I'm going to go out of order because uh, Ed Sulowski's got a long presentation that's very. I want to lead up to it. It's like a tease. You got to stick around <laughs> for Sulowski and the CIP, but. Chief Skilling, Skilling. I don't want to say Skilling like the a weatherman, but Schilling. <laughs> JP, he's got a quick public service announcement. Uh, Manager Rooney and the board, um, really pleased to announce that uh, on July 27th, uh, firefighters and paramedics responded to a, a woman in distress and cardiac arrest, and uh, they were able to revive her, and she arrived at the hospital with a, pul with a pulse. But it's what we do. However, um, back during the budget process with the uh, Audit and Finance Committee and then your final <coughs> approval for the budget, uh, we were in a trial phase of a new CPR device that you guys um, had opportunity to watch during that, those, those uh, budget presentations. And that piece of equipment was used during this uh, save and actually was credited as helping uh, save the life of that citizen of uh, is it the, the constant, so the one that keeps? Yep, that's the one that con continually uh, does the chest compressions for them, mm -hmm. and it allows paramedics to concentrate on the airway and, uh, and then nice. the uh, life-saving drug therapies. Oh. So, and that was uh, Firefighter Orman, uh, Barnard, Sutphin, and Whelan who responded to that call, and they did a fantastic job. So, and the patient's still recovering in the hospital today. So, outstanding the combination of those firemen, paramedics was. Suffins like one year on the job or a year and uh, yeah, and and Waylon is just waiting. He just completed his uh, paramedic training and is waiting to take the state test. So, mm -hmm. and then the two senior medics that were there. <coughs> That's really good That's to hear. Great. That's really yeah. good. Thank you for your yes, support. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Yeah, Officer Barnard's out at the festival out there. I just saw him tonight and oh. introduced myself and got to meet him. So, yeah. nice young man. With that. Uh, Melissa, if you, I'm sorry I didn't want to <laughs> steal your thunder, but somebody being saved. <laughs> I just wanted to 
to um, come back and thank the village of Carpentersville, um, the public works staff here at Carpentersville, the police department, the fire department, and everybody else that really contributed to the success of our second annual Fest on the Fox. Um, no storms, so we obviously have to thank Mother Nature for that. We were very relieved. And um, the day went, went just as planned. You know, I think it really highlighted Carpentersville. The city looked beautiful, the traffic control. Um, I think everything was just a huge hit. And the feedback that we got was the residents just loved it. So I was just hoping, I just wanted to share that with you guys. If you had any feedback for us, um, we're hoping that this becomes an ongoing event every year. Great. So, um, just want to question if Mr. <coughs> Huber was a good stand-in for the John, for John he Skillman. Did a, he did a great job. He actually volunteered in the beer garden. So, he was <laughs> <the best>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he, he was. You know what? Um, the whole team was just wonderful. It was really yeah. great. There was no issues whatsoever. And your public <coughs> works team. I, you know, I remember the guy in the morning, Chuck, was just phenomenal. And the police officer, Pete, that was there in the afternoon. They were just so willing to help out in any way that they could outside of the scope of why they were there. And that really meant a lot to us because it's a, it's a huge undertaking yeah. um, to put these events on and to coordinate everything. And um, so when you have people that are like, hey, I can help do that, you know, it just makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. And they were also willing to. So you have a great staff <coughs> um, and, and we're proud to be a part of your community and um, just wanted to share that with you. Well, we appreciate it, Melissa. And I think we're on the same page because I hope it's a, uh, annual event going forward too and it's what we're trying to do here as far as uh, elevate our image and provide some fun things for the residents to do here so I appreciate it very much so thank you, thank you. and I only signed up at one booth and I won a hundred dollar gift card I was quite wow. happy with wow. your event <laughs> oh, no. well, a lot of your businesses Home Depot came down and did free birdhouse kits with the kids the friends of the Fox did a fun fun walk oh, in the morning um, so there was a lot of partners that, that played a role and <coughs> able, we were able to then keep pretty much everything but the food free mm -hmm. which was nice so people came out with kids they could do the ponies and the face painting and the birdhouses and they didn't run out any money yeah and I think it's important nowadays because so many events are just so expensive yes. yeah so exactly. And on a side note, the app is live, the Chamber app. Your event for this weekend oh. is on the app. Oh, um, okay. So you can go to the Apple, the Apple Store or the Google Store and um, download the app. And then also you can update us if you feel there's something that should be on there. And it does notifications if there's anything added to news or events. What's so the name of the app? The NKC chamber. and then the word Chamber. And NKC the and then the chamber. word Chamber. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank oh. you. And you do know we have a new electronic sign that's, I don't know if it's working yet, but going to be working shortly. So Tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow, oh, yeah. Nice. And where is that going to be at right here? At 68 and 25. Nice. Yeah, so there's a lot of traffic, so that'll be good for all our events. Awesome. Yeah, to get the that word out. That will be great. Yeah, so. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks. Thank you. Mark? Well, I'm going to have Hitesh go first. I've got to keep. Poor Ed, you're keeping him in suspense. <laughs> we'll go from saving money to spending some money. Oh, oh boy. Uh, good evening, and thanks, Manager Rooney. Um, as you may know, the Village Board recently approved the parameters ordinance for the issuance of bond to refund our 2008 series bonds. And since, like, I think, Six weeks, the Manager Rooney and I have been working with our financial advisor, Jeff Schupel, uh, particularly in light of the low interest rate environment. <coughs> uh, we had a conference call with him this afternoon. We, he had some numbers from the firms and the banks, and the numbers are really encouraging. And obviously, we stressed upon him that we are looking for at least half a million dollars in savings. If it's not half a million dollars, we'll wait, and we'll try to work with somebody else in the future. But looks like, I mean, he told us one of the banks, J.P. Morgan Chase, who has bid on this one, uh, they can produce at least half a million dollars in savings. So Jeff Schupel, our financial advisor, he will come back to us tomorrow after he confirms the number with the Chase. And if it is half a million dollars, we will go ahead and make a deal and close the deal. Uh, and, and that would be a good, yeah, in light of the interest rate that has really helped us. Uh, so and that's the half million after fees and paying the arbitrage, calling it early. Half that's a million dollars. And over a period of time, too. Yep. Yes, and that'll be good. And 
I was just thinking, I've not been here even two years and this is like a fourth bond issue and I was like kind of adding up the savings. I looked at 2015A where we did IEPA refunding, we did 2006 refunding, this would be a 2008 refunding. If I add up all these three numbers, I mean like real hard savings, it would be almost 1.6 million. Uh-huh. And I'm not counting the 2014 bonds where we had originally estimated 750,000 in annual debt service and we ended up with only 695,000. So like almost we saved 55,000 annually there for life of the bond which is 20 years, so roughly 1 million. So if I add up all these numbers, it's roughly 2.5 or 6 million dollars. So that's a pretty good, yes. The savings is probably even greater than that, Hitesh, considering that we did all that work when the economy was not doing well, and when we bidded out these uh, jobs, they came in a lot lower than what we anticipated. We saved even money on, on uh, the people that did the work, so it's really, <coughs> really was a big win for the village all the way around. And then it's it just it really pleases me that we're refinancing these bonds again and saving one point. This is our what third, fourth time we're doing this. This is 1.6 million. I yeah. mean that's hard cost that we thought we'd have to pay. It's a lot of money. It was a wide dis- decision on part of the board to allow the manager to work independently on this and go to bat for us, call call New York, talk directly to the bankers and make our case. Uh, I think that's a big part of our success here is that we hmm. turn them loose to do the right thing and not try to micromanage right. his work on the bonds, so right. to speak. Yeah, you know, it, it shows that we're not uh, – standing pat on the, on the status quo. The staff isn't, isn't sitting on, and <coughs> coasting on inertia with these bonds. It'd be really easy to just have them issued, have them out there, and just have our, our, our pay schedule, and, and that'd be the end of it. But we're really staying on top of these things. You're really staying on top of right. these things, and the taxpayers are definitely yes. reaping the benefits from it. Yes. yes. Very good. And, and all savings, as I thought, goes into CIP. So it all goes back into the infrastructure stuff that we know we need, and we have a hard time coming up with the money. But with this kind of a deal, we've got a lot of money to go into the capital improvement plan that we're going to hear about now. So that's especially good for us. We're not taking the money and trying to pay day-to-day expenses with it because it will disappear. But if we put it in the ground or into a building or whatever, then it's here for a long time instead of one shot and done. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, well. thank you Anybody Hitesh. else with a comment? No, Otherwise, just thank you very much. So very few points Hitesh. in there. Thank you, Now, with, wow, with that said, really we'll get to the engineering department and Ed Slavsky to talk about the capital improvement projects. Let's spend. <laughs> and spend some of the savings. <laughs> Burning a hole in their pocket. For some residents that have been waiting a long time for new streets or new... Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> As Rooney said, uh, we have to put together a presentation, kind of give you the status of where we're at with capital projects. There it is. It's all about that anticipation. <coughs> like me at home with the remote. That's why I never get to touch it. <laughs> like my pavement. Bad connection? Or? Okay. Sorry about that. Can imagine.
you sing and dance? <laughs> Anybody? We might just have to do it that way without the full. I like it. Fund. Um, Ed, Ed, if you would get closer to the mic, or, either or turn it to the side. There you go. Yeah. Or so you can take the hand mic. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of Just pull it up for him. Murphy's Law. How's that? For the folks at home to hear you better. Sure. <clears throat> uh, the MFT resurfacing project, West Side. Um, this. Uh, was conducted in uh, Providence subdivision. Um, the one last street there, Sanders, uh, bids came in very favorable. Um, so we were able to do an extra cul-de-sac. Uh, it was budgeted at 250. Um, the contract all said and done it was uh, 217 and that included uh, resurfacing, uh, sidewalk repairs for ADA compliant, curb and gutter base repair, um, uh, some storm sewer improvements around the manholes and inlets and then uh, pavement markings. Keel Farm subdivision. This kind of wrapped up Keel Farms. Last year we did the south portion. This wrapped up the north portion. Same scope as the other project, just funded with um, village funds. Uh, list of streets are there. That was budgeted at 400,000. The contract came in at 369. Um, this is the east side resurfacing. We leverage our MFT funds on the east side. Uh, we've been very successful every year to get CDBG funding through Kane County. Uh, we just had that pre-con today, pre-construction meeting. They should be uh, on site within the next 10 days. Uh, that was budgeted around 400,000. That one came in at a, a real low bid price at 264. Um, so we're saving quite a bit of money on that. Um, and then we'll get half that back through the grant once we're done. And that's uh, Sioux Avenue on the far north side. Sioux Avenue right here. That's going to be resurfacing with select sidewalk repairs. And then Wren is the same scope of work. Caddy is a total uh, re removal and replacement of the carriage walk. We put back uh, curb and gutter, a new sidewalk, and then resurface. And then the rural cross section here, uh, no curb and gutter, no sidewalk on Greenwood. Um, that's just uh, resurfacing with some base repair. And again, that should start within the next 10 days. Ed, can I ask a question? Sure. Is it just based on that map? Is that all of Sioux? Because that's a really long street. Is that? Uh, no, it's the section of Sioux between um, Papoose and Navajo. Okay, okay. And then what about Wren? That also is kind of a. Is a Wren little... is the section south of Hazard. Just south of Hazard? Correct. Okay. okay. And it goes to, I think it's, is it Ball Avenue? I believe, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then um, Caddy is also the section south from Hazard to yeah. Ball Avenue. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Sure. Rivers you Drive reconstruction project. Um, the design's complete. We, uh, the board just approved an IGA with Kane County. Uh, project uh, was just awarded this evening. Uh, work should begin within 15 days or so, and uh, the contract does sh should have uh, substantial completion this year. Um, might be some trees and some landscaping that we got to follow up in the spring, but um, we're going to get that done this year. It was budgeted $800,000, uh, $800, and the bid amount came in at 776. So again, um, 
hopefully there'll be a savings if uh, we don't come into any issues during construction. Ed, oh. any idea how long the street will be closed on that? Uh, we'll know more. Um, uh, we have a pre-construction meeting, I think it's next Tuesday, and so we'll know the schedule on how the contractor plans on you know, attacking the project, essentially, because uh, the, the schedule's kind of theirs. Um, we are allowing them to totally close the, for the culvert, but they have to leave the road open uh, for one-way traffic when the culvert's open, or when the culvert's passable. So uh, when we get the schedule, we'll have more information and we can pass that on. Um, yeah, well, I've already talked to um, uh, Pace, school district, uh, um, the refuge collection, things like that, and we do door hangers with all the residents. They'll all be notified prior to that. But most of the information is going to come after the pre-con next week. We'll know more then. Ball Avenue, uh, this completes the, uh, the connection essentially through um, uh, just south of the Walmart parcel uh, through the Biesinger property. Um, the red section is what we're proposing there. It's the new construction. Uh, the blue section is what Walmart completed and then what we recently resurfaced as part of the keel um, a few, uh, few, few weeks ago. Um, that's currently out to bid. Um, that again, um, we want to get that done this year. Same thing, trees and landscaping may follow up in the spring, but the uh, plan is to get that done and open up this year. The budget is $800,000. The engineer's estimate is 802 and change, but uh, we think it'll come in a little lower than that. Um, and again, that's uh, uh, the 11th is the bid opening, and we've already worked out with uh, Manager Rooney and with Kevin to make sure that it's on the agenda for the 16th. And that'll be right after Labor Day. They'll probably mobilize and begin. We've actually, um, yeah, we've got everything ready to go, so we're going to notify the successful little bidder prior to the award in anticipation that everything's going to check out. So he's going to have all the contract and paperwork and everything, uh, you know, ahead of time to start going with that. Um, and Labor Day sounds about that right. That money yeah. will be reimbursed from the TIF, Route 25 to TIF, to pay for that section. And if you go back one slide, I don't think we highlighted that enough, the... IGA with Kane County. Yeah, thank you. And the monies that we save doing that, as well as sure. the less complicated project that working together. Well, we were looking at our project, which really was just a culvert replacement, if you remember, the previous budget year. And then we looked at everything a little more closer, and the road was failing. There was lighting issues. There was drainage issues with storm sewer. It became a much bigger scope. Um, and the culvert... Uh, needed to be increased substantially. So we went from just a couple basically pieces of pipe to what's now a, a con span, similar to what we have on Maple Avenue, but much smaller. At the same time we were looking at that, the Forest Preserve finished some path improvements, and they were trying to obtain the permit to construct a bridge over the creek at just, you know, uh, maybe 50 feet east of there uh, to finish their path. Well, we talk to them and at the same you know we it took their improvements what they needed and um, they paid for the design they're paying for a portion of the construction and so we're going to essentially they're going to piggyback on our project and we're just going to widen that site out um, for a multi-use uh, path over the creek um, and they were very easy to work with and we have a few other projects coming up with them uh, that I'll show you here too that uh, I think because of that it'll, the other IGA should go smoothly as well Any questions on Ball Avenue? And, and highlight yeah. the power lines, what we're doing with the power and the lights. At, um, at Ball that. Avenue sh is going to be uh, similar uh, to, to what uh, L.W. Biesinger was with the lighting and whatnot. Um, we did have to work with ComEd to move some poles. Uh, that should be within the next 10 days, I think. They're scheduled to do that. Um, and then uh, they should be out of the way. And so they're... Should be three power line poles removed. Okay. We're essentially right there where ball meets spacing. Right. right. Um, we're going to move three or four poles, and then we're going to put a new pole on the other side because we have to run service to the panel to uh, for the new lights we're putting in. I have a question, if I could. Um, 
So Ed, um, what is the time frame for this project? Would this be done before uh, the snow flies, or is it? Yes, we're. Would be? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then yes. So. If <laughs> yeah. Ed, Ed yeah. Will okay. Well, I was just curious about it. So, if you're going down a uh, ball, and then you're going to dead end at Beesinger, so what will we have there? A stop sign, and then is is there nothing? Well, Beesinger, that traffic will still flow. Correct. There's going to be a stop sign, um, westbound. Okay. And then um, the north south traffic on on, on Beesinger will just have free flow. They will. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks. Oh, and part of that is too is a um, there wasn't enough room to put a bike path in, so we're doing the shared use. <coughs> um, it's the federal standard. I think it's uh, six foot wide with the shared use and signs and all that uh, continuously through the corridor. But as you note out there now, why that also works is there's a wide, extra wide sidewalk that mm -hmm. goes from basing it right. up to the Walmart yeah. property already. So yeah. pedestrians and the bikes won't be forced to mix with the cars. Silverstone. Um, this project is carried over from last year. The design is complete, has been for a little bit. The IGA is, uh, is worked out with the uh, park district. Um, and we have one tentatively with the uh, village of Algonquin. Uh, Algonquin is working on obtaining the easement rights through the uh, property owner there. It's a development that, you know, back in 08, 09 kind of kind of went under and uh, there's some issues on it and Algonquin's working that out. And I think Kevin said maybe couple weeks Within or something, two weeks. Mm -hmm. we should have it uh, worked out. Uh, so there's a chance that could still go this year. Uh, if not, it'll be the spring. But uh, that's something we want to get wrapped up to. <coughs> Carpenter Creek improvement. The construction is 100% completed. Uh, we did the final walkthrough. Um, Army Corps came out. They've given their uh, approval on it. Um, the uh, consulting engineer is uh, updating the model, the storm model, uh, stormwater model, um, and they're completing the required uh, FEMA documentation. They want to have everything submitted. Um, they said October, but they're actually thinking that they could have everything in by uh, mid-September. Uh, what that would do is, um, at at minimum, it would get um, the properties out of the uh, um, floodplain. And they're hoping that the structures will all be out um, and will reduce people's flood insurance. Um, and hopefully early summer next year, um, that could all be taken care of. Okay. Want to add on that, Mark? Or? Okay. That's, that's the plan. And Kevin is, you know, working with Ed closely on that. So the homeowners, hopefully, folks down in Springfield will still have an office that's functionally in operation and that'll be the hold up <laughs> how many homes are in there like over there's almost 44 homes and 11 businesses i believe that should be if things go right and even if they're not totally removed there's a process that kevin's and ed will help each resident with hr green mm -hmm. to get their property even if it's just an amendment to the to the lomar oh. to also remove them or largely remove them to reduce their need for flood insurance. Uh, Mark, the, is every home uh, have a particular dollar amount for a flood insurance? Is that a standard policy? I've never had to take it out. So no, no, it's a wide range. It well, is? It's based on the value of the property. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right, I see. So there's no way to really kind of say what the savings could be per home on an mm -hmm. average. You <coughs> it's know? typically three times what your, what your home insurance is. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Pretty, pretty close. Times, so it's oh, that's a significant the savings. It's, then. it's a yeah. significant savings. Yeah. And for the okay. large industrial buildings, it's a lot, a lot of money. Really? Wow. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you. Well, Thanks, Jeff. It's additional. It'll make some of the land down there develop. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it looks a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Than yes. what it did previously. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very Good nice. Point. <coughs> Next project, 31 Huntley, Main and Lincoln. Uh, we're at pre-final design stage. Um, it may have already been sent to IDOT. I think that was sometime this week they wanted to set in and get their uh, final comments, which are typically minimal. Um, 
And then um, uh, right away is still ongoing. Um, this evening uh, on the agenda is the first 14 parcels for that project. Um, IDOT, I think, finalized the approval on four or five of them. So we're around 19 or 20. Um, there's 39 parcels, so you know uh, we're about halfway there. Um, in the next maybe three weeks, I think, we'll have another round of parcels. Uh, we're pretty close to wrapping up uh, negotiations with another uh, eight or nine parcels, so it's getting there. Um, there are three or four holdouts, which will probably go to condemnation, um, but that is in the IDOT right away, so they have uh, their quick take procedure that they, they do that with, so luckily it's in their court, and we don't have to really worry about that. We lucked out, so. Still, I doubt the ones that are holding out are federal problems. Well, state, 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 state. Okay. yeah, and our in our uh, Fed agreement with IDOT, um, they're required to, even though we're negotiating and obtaining the property under our contract, they have the final say. So whenever it was an issue on a parcel on the state route, they take over from there. Uh, we don't have that quick take authority on our right away, but they do on theirs. So luckily, the issues are on state right away. Um, and there's a chance that a couple of them, um, they, they just have some negotiating to do really. So it's really just the next step of the process. Not that it will go to condemnation, but that's just the next step of the process. And if somebody's going to do quick take, it's always preferable for the state sure. to do it instead of the local government. And quick take for the folks at home, I'm sorry, it's kind of inside baseball term. The property is taken by a court action from the property owner, and it's not the entire property, it's a parcel adjoining Route 31, and then there, there's a proceeding, legal proceeding, that gives just compensation for the value that was taken and the damage to the remainder of the property. So they're made whole, but instead of a trial first, and then the local government would get the property, the state does it, and they set the price of the value of compensation after the taking so it doesn't hold up a project a road project infrastructure from occurring and this the um, these are all on 31 these are on 31 so, uh, so what is our time frame now yeah that's where it was just going to hit but basically this is supposed to be a January lutting it likely will slip because we got a plan on one of those three we'll probably stretch it out and that could make a March flooding, but in May of 17, the work could be done. Right. If everything's, if IDOT clears all the right away, meaning ours and theirs, um, we hit the March letting. It's usually two months for IDOT to execute the contracts. So if it's a March letting, you're looking at like May. Okay. Um, but the time frame for the residents and businesses to understand, we'll notice this completely, but with Huntley going at the same time with West Dundee, that stretch from Lincoln and Maine to basically to Sleepy Hollow Road. Yeah, my next slide after this will show that. It's, there's going to be two years of construction on that stretch. And that's before we do traffic lights or a roundabout at Washington and Maine. Ouch. If that ever happens. So. So we need, that, we need that I-90 construction done ASAP so that we well, can so maintain I guess the, a couple ways across the river. Yeah. The, <laughs> del viable. the delay of the right-of-way acquisition has actually pushed this project back six, nine months. Mm -hmm. So that's probably good because of the fact that they, they say that the I-90 largely yeah. will be open by next summer. Mm. I'm not sure if you can see like those numbers there. <laughs> I know I can't. I can't see him. All right. No big deal. Um, I can email you this if you'd like to look at, but really it, it's, a, it's a breakdown of the, f of the funding sources for the project. Um, really the highlight is the uh, total construct the total cost for everything, all design phases and construction is uh, 9.8 million. We're roughly getting about 70% um, Fed participation for all of that. And then also the states, uh, since uh, 31 is a state right away, they've committed to just over a million dollars for the project. So with federal and state participation, we're at 6.3 roughly. Um, so out of that 9.8 million for everything, um, our 
our uh, participation would be 3.5 million. And that's all estimates, you know, it's uh, construction still a year away or nine months away. Um, so right around 70% Fed funded and the state's putting in 1 million as well. So those is faring pretty well on that project. Second big project is the Huntley Road. This is the uh, um, project with the West Dundee where they're the lead agency. Uh, 12 or about 18 months ago, we entered into an IGA with uh, West Dundee for the design. Again, the design is the pre-final stage. Um, it will be submitted to IDOT shortly for a final review. Um, right away is ongoing. We have, uh, I think, four parcels, and West Dundee has maybe three times that. But luckily, West Dundee's uh, half of their parcels, I think, are their own, so it makes it easy. Um, we might be, this might actually go ahead of the Huntley 31 if right away goes well. We could be looking at a January letting, but same thing if something gets hung up, it could be March, um, which puts it into May construction. Um, but right now everything is uh, moving along okay on right away. And um, we want to put a plug in for the next board meeting you'll have <coughs> pending attorney review, the, an IGA with our township. Uh, partners, because they have, uh, you could probably highlight that open space issue, but they are going to be very cooperative oh, right in there. working out the, the the transfer of some land <coughs> so we can build the, the, widen the road. So that open space that the township has up there from Sleepy Hollow to the east. Yeah, to Ranch, I believe it's Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. So that's being worked out, and uh, I don't think, Hart, we have any hang-ups to that. It's just a matter of uh, working <coughs> with Ms. Harney when she's back Correct. in the office next week, and we should have that for the 16th. That's the goal. Uh, and the uh, widening will include bike lanes. Yes. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. How long would this project take? Just this is um, <coughs> probably 18 months, oh, really? whereas the Huntley 31 is probably closer to two years. Yeah, I remember you yeah. said two seasons for 31. So right. this is a... Uh, 18 months, huh? Wow. Yeah, and like, like Mark had mentioned about both being under construction at the same time, I kind of dashed in where 31 Huntley is, and then the red is uh, our portion of Huntley Road, blue is West Dundee's portion, so you know, essentially you could have all that under construction at one time. The good part is it's all getting done sooner. So. Yeah. And we'll I muddle through on the west side. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> don't have to muddle near as much as I will. <laughs> Just some uh, well, budgets, some funding stats on this project. Um, yeah. All phases are about uh, 10.5 million. Uh, federal participation for this was uh, uh, 7 million, so we're about 75 percent uh, Fed funded. Um, which gives uh, West Dundee and Carpentersville uh, 3.4 million uh, left over to pay. And then we have 50-50 uh, is what we're anticipating for that. So on a $10.5 million project, Carpentersville is going to be about 1.7 million for the whole thing. Um, and that's, again, five-lane cross-section, uh, lights, um, lighted intersection at Elm, uh, landscaping, storm sewer. I would point out at our previous discussion about bonds, that's where this money goes, that we're able to do these projects because we're saving bond money, putting it into capital improvement. So we have funding to do things like this that sure. need to be done. All these projects he's put up there, that money goes into those kinds of items. Go ahead, Ed, I'm sorry. That's right. Next project, Washington Main Intersection. Uh, this was the phase one that H.R. Green uh, just wrapped up. Uh, the, the phase one report and design is complete. Um, that was sent off to IDOT for review and uh, approval. Uh, we'll, staff will continue to pursue various grant fundings. Uh, we know that um, uh, CMAC is, uh, came out and said that it uh, would rank very high as a grant submittal. Uh, STP is a possibility. Um, so uh, really it's uh, the village board's uh, flavor as to how they want to go with that intersection and um, we could be before the village uh, or 
during the budget process for funding for phase two, depending on what's decided. Ted, when do you think that's going to come up for discussion, to your knowledge? So it'll come up in the labor after Labor Day at our <coughs> first audit and finance okay. meeting. We should have the results of the engineering work done with CMAP okay. and confirmation. And that's on the village website, the engineer's yeah. review of the two options. We've discussed this a couple times. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like it's moving forward a little bit, and I, I feel like I'm in the dark, or I'm waiting for the discussion, and you know. Well, the final, the final confirmation, as we talked with the engineers yeah. on the six months ago, is that CMAP is going to recommend. Of course they are. They're going to recommend yeah. the roundabout for mm -hmm. full federal funding, yeah. and if we do traffic lights, it'll be on us. Yeah, it's us and every other town. They're looking at four or five in McKinley County alone. It is the project du jour, guys. In Indiana's getting it, too, yeah. as well. So, um, but uh, keep in mind that if we do it on our own, we're talking TIF funding yeah. from the, the extension of the TIF on the west, or on mm -hmm. 31, the uh, Spring Hill, the old Spring Hill TIF. Yeah. Yeah. But so if anyone at home is interested in looking at that engineer review of that full project to option yeah. lights, signage versus signage versus the roundabout, there's mm -hmm. a... 25 minute video describing that in great detail. Part of the reason this has been kind of lingering for a while is we lost six, seven months on that whole historical preservation uh, review. We had to wait and hear back from the state. State finally came back and just said, you know what, you can do it during the phase two. Mm -hmm. So we waited, you know, months and months and really there was no need to. Mm -hmm. um, it's for Triangle Park? Is that? It's for because uh, Old Town is part of the uh, Dundee Historical District, I believe. It's actually recorded historical district. So that threw a red flag down in Springfield. And so they're actually going to have, uh, during the phase two, we're going to be required to do a, um, I don't know if it's an archaeological thing, but it's more of a historical preservation. They look at the buildings and um, you know what, what could be impacted. But we're really not impacting anything on private property. There's no right-of-way takes, essentially, on that project. So it uh, should be minimal. Washington and Spring Street culverts. Um, this uh, scope is very similar to Carpenter Creek improvements. Um, the only difference is the uh, culvert component for Carpenter Creek was done on Maple Avenue, so we didn't have that as part of the project. But uh, same thing here, we have two restricted uh, channels or uh, culverts, um, so the scope would be to uh, widen those out, uh, do uh, stream stabilization, um, hit the creek widen out a little bit, uh, remove various homes and businesses from the floodplain. Um, it's very similar to Carpenter Creek. Uh, the design is ongoing. They've got the culverts uh, wrapped up. We're working with, um, actually I have a meeting with uh, Quilt Master tomorrow to discuss the um, improvements at the uh, um, bike path bridge because that also has to be widened out. Um, and we need to discuss access and easement rights and stuff for that project with Quilt Master. Uh, we've met with um, Kane County Forest Preserve. Uh, they're on board with uh, entering into another IGA um, for us to do some improvements to the um, uh, bike path crossing. And uh, they've actually uh, committed to giving us a, a bridge. Um, they have several bridges that are relatively new within a couple years. But other projects that the tollway has done require them to remove those bridges. So we, uh, Kevin and I went and looked at them and um, identified one that we could use. So it would probably be part of this project. Um, and that allows us to widen the creek at the uh, bike crossing as well. And then next fiscal or upcoming fiscal year, we'll be requesting uh, you know, phase three funding for that. Hopi Lane Storm Sewer. Uh, Pre-final design is complete. Uh, staff is reviewing that right now. And then uh, uh, phase two design would be requested, funding for that would be requested in the upcoming uh, budget process. Uh, this will eliminate uh, flooding issues on um, uh, Hopi and uh, Helm. Uh, the businesses back up a little bit. Um, the box culvert under the pavement is failing, it's crumbling, it's just in very, very bad shape. And this would also, Kevin's not here tonight, but we were talking with 
Keith Andrews Park. That's the that storm water. If we improve that, then it'll go across the street and it ends up in that ravine mm -hmm. at uh, Keith Andrews. So there is another study that's not completed, but when we get that, hopefully by the kickoff meeting of September to talk about that project and its impact for Keith Andrews as well as the Lake Marion lake bed and that. So that, that's ongoing as well that will take into account this project. So they're not, they are all linked. Storm water, water has to be accounted for from its inception in the village till it gets to the river. Ed, I know there used to be some problems right outside of Village Pizza. That's will this part. will this take care That's of? That's part of that issue. Yes. That's the right. failed box culvert that we're speaking of. Right. Okay. Another little storm sewer project, Williams Road. This is actually just a failed culvert, um, crushed, full debris, sediment, uh, undersized. Um, uh, phase one and two is um, wrapped up. We're reviewing that right now. Uh, <coughs> this is a uh, area, the whole uh, area south of um, uh, the uh, apartments there, and west of the high school parking lot uh, uh, drains to that low point where the circle is that represents the inlet there. Where's that in relation to King? Uh, uh, Kings is over here, and okay. Bowles is over here. Okay. Over it's just south you drive right past it, you can't even see the structures out there. Fox um, really, it's, a, it's just an ongoing maintenance uh, headache for public works. They have to go out there and repair roads that get washed away and the structure uh, yeah, um, water rehabilitation. Williams Road all the time. So again, we'll be uh, proposing that we uh, budget construction dollars for that next fiscal year. Public Works in-house resurfacing. Um, the green represents what's been completed. Um, the red is what's uh, currently being done. And Bob, I think they've milled it. And did they start paving that today? Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. And then um, from there, they're going to move on to the, um, I guess that's magenta, I was told. The magenta streets, they will move on to those. They want to get those completed this year, they're hoping. All right. Lastly, and before you go to that, in conjunction, we briefed you, Bob and I did, we've got the engineering estimate for the aprons that we've discussed at the board level for over a year about, because if we did every apron, the in-house crews, they wouldn't get the production lane miles. So the, to do every apron that is less, that's damaged or needs work, in that entire area, and Bob, correct me, that was 140 plus or minus aprons, 140 of them to do. It's about $148,000. So we're asking to do a budget amendment to include this work by an outside vendor to come in. That that's all they do is do, you know, kind of that driveway apron effect. And we think we can get most, if not all, those done in the entire. Um, Old Town area. Old Town area, and to include the Edwards, Illinois streets. Hmm. So that sounds like a good deal. Yeah, and I, it's the staff recommendation. We just want to make sure that uh, no one's changed their mind about yeah, doing that. Because that's not easy get that to do that work. Done. It's not easy to do that. You got to do that a lot be, to get good at it. So yeah. this is going to be. This is. I like this idea. So we'll Are the, the residents aware or? No, they'll be aware. Oh. If okay. I don't hear any objection, we're going to be bringing this for your, a vote either the 16th, probably unlikely that we can bid it mm -hmm. and get results to have you approve a contract the 16th, but the first meeting in September, okay. we hope to bring that contract to you for okay. approval and then it'll get widely disseminated to the residents then. When will the vote be brought before the board? April the 16th meeting? Se September, is it the 6th? Oh, okay. The first Tuesday in September. But that'll give them two months to do this work, and I think that they'll be able to 
get the majority, if not all, of it done. Mm -hmm. Go fishing for you. Yeah. Right. Thank we'll, you, Ed. We'll, we'll keep an eye on this project, Ed, as they do this. And <laughs> Take both. <laughs> inspect the, we'll inspect sure. the, the yeah, village, we'll, we'll inspect the aprons as they're yeah. done. Yeah. Yes. We'll do okay, so we'll keep an eye on it, make sure it gets done right. Good. Right. Um, wanted to show you the map of our completed streets. Wow. I don't know if I can bring this what up. What happened to the screen? red? Yeah. Yeah, back here. It's going away. Slowly. It's a little, a little red. Exactly. Well, green you see a lot of green is the point, I think. Um, what used to be an issue on the east side, uh, you can see where our um, problem area might be coming up here in, in a couple of years. The uh, yellow is still not bad, it's just not good. Um, so, yeah, we're making a lot of progress on our, on our streets. Uh, this is before all the stuff that you just told us about? Correct. This is, you, no, this so, doesn't include. So, so this map is going to change a lot. There's going to be less year. red, less red in a, another month or so, yeah. That concludes my presentation. I have a question. Sorry, it's long. Could, could I? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I didn't know if someone else raised their hand. Um, just a couple quick questions. Uh, that very first slide, you said that was Providence Point, right? Yes. That you were doing? So, and I know. Is one, one and two. One and two, Correct. Paul? One and I'm two. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So then, and Glen Eagle is done uh, yes. for the Glen most Eagle part. So. Um, by and large, the west side, um, you mentioned some curb in that. So are they in relatively decent shape still, Ed, or are we really? Spring Acre Hills and Shenandoah and Kimball would be the remaining. Yeah, but, I mean, are they in, in really yes. bad shape? No. No. Oh, um, that's what I was wondering. The yellow, and again, you can't really see the title, that thing down there, but yeah. the yeah. yellow is still not bad. Okay, okay. Um, it's just, you know, we got maybe... Oh, we're staying on top of it. Four or five, exactly, we're staying on top of okay. it, right? Okay. You know, it, it's the red, the, uh, yeah. the blue and the two shades of red that we start to get yeah. worried I, I about. I was talking to Ed before spending. the meeting because something I brought up last year uh, with Glen Eagle was the base repairs. And you, you hear how Bob's crew is struggling with it now. Yeah. It's always been a problem. And, um, yeah, I've been really concerned about the developments on the west side because they're relatively young mm -hmm. developments yeah. you know yeah. uh and we shouldn't have to be making a lot of base repairs and it, it's in, you know it's important for this board and future boards that if we ever do have any other development in town to make sure that we hold these developers to some high standards yeah. of putting down some thick bases because it makes our job a lot easier and a lot less expensive yeah. if we can just go through and grind it and lay down new asphalt so for Providence one and two, there was not that much in yeah. base repairs at all, yeah. uh, but that was without the main streets. Those were the cul-de-sacs oh, in those okay. areas. So, okay. uh, so not as much as there was in in Glen Eagle. But uh, yeah. um, you know, we'll just have to see as we knock yeah. each one of these out what type of what type of base repairs need to because that's where you spend a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, you know, we saw that with Sleepy Hollow Road north of Miller up to uh, Grandview. Um, so, you know, we don't want to, you know, we found out later that there were some concessions made with the developer at the time that allowed those bases to go in. Mm -hmm. I, I think it sh a, a, th a thicker base should have been laid down. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Well, thanks, Paul. I had one other quick question. I know you're doing Rivers View, but what about the condition of the rest of Lincolnwood Manor as a whole? I mean, has we do hit that area as part of our maintenance. Um, we've got a couple yellow, which again is mm -hmm. fair. There's, there's a couple red. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Public Works has done a couple, done a street in there, Bob. I think I know MFT program did a street in there. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's something we need to start sidewalk. getting in there. Yeah, we've done sidewalk yeah. in the area, yeah. so it's definitely it, an older. Well, those are carriage sidewalks too. Yeah. So, right. I mean, so it, it has seen maintenance probably every other year in one way or another. Yeah. It'll likely be a CDBG project in the yeah. future. Yeah. yeah. The one thing maybe, and I correct me if I'm wrong, is that the, it's not as heavily trafficked. Pretty much if you live down there, that's who's driving down there as you're visiting. There's yeah, really it's no uh, the main what kills it is garbage trucks. And y yeah, it's that Local traffic thing. doesn't do much yeah. for it. Right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right, thank you, Ed. Sure. Appreciate it. Well, this, this reminds me a little bit of a discussion. Paul, 12 years on the board, I'm 11. Uh, it, 
one capacity or another, but when we took office, we looked at the previous five years, and in five years, they had done five miles of road. Yeah. Well, there are 100 miles of road in Carpentersville, so at that rate, we were on a 100-year replacement yeah. cycle. <laughs> it, would just, it just flabbergasted me, and I know Paul, uh, but you look at the map now, it's a lot more than one mile a year of replacement. We would have been at 10 miles of replacement. We're getting close to yeah. 90 miles maybe. We probably only have eight or 10 miles of roads that are not resurfaced, mm -hmm. mostly in the subdivisions you mentioned, mm -hmm. and those will get done. We finally got ourselves on a reasonable maintenance schedule for the roads of Carpentersville. Uh, it's been one of those things that we pushed hard on. Mm -hmm. That map yeah. was very red, Ed. I was on audit and finance at the time. That map was very red at the time. It was, so, uh, yeah. it, we didn't feel too good after that. <laughs> They're a little <laughs> no, ill. That's for it's sure. It cost a lot of but, money. Uh, it's yeah. 200, Thank you to 208 lane miles, is that what we have? So our about 100 miles. Work, our willingness to borrow money, which you, nobody likes to borrow money, but you can't repair roads without money and commitment. The commitment was there. Hopefully, while well, we'll get into a maintenance phase, we won't have to borrow money anymore. Well, I, I'm yes, hoping sir. that is the case, that we won't have to borrow money. We will just maintain as we go. Uh, it'll be a whole different scenario for our village from this day forward. Uh, with that... Uh, it, it's a great point, because one of the things that we discussed at the time, and, and you remember this, is uh, that we knew that the economy wasn't doing well and that the price to do some of this work was going to come down and so we kind of anticipated that that was going to happen and i don't think not as much as to what actually happened yeah, uh, because we had everything in order we were able to get a lot of these projects for mm -hmm. pretty good money you know uh, product and uh, labor uh, but then you know with hatesh's report <coughs> earlier to be able to take that debt and refinance it to achieve you know lower payouts of uh interest and principal has helped us even more so that you know in hindsight it's always 2020 they say and it, it, we certainly did the right thing by yeah well there was a the commitment to, do that. to uh purchase the equipment too to invest yeah. in that com uh, equipment yeah. so we got so. yeah we got third party and, and we looked at you know doing it in-house versus doing it by third party and determined that Sometimes it makes sense to have a third party do it, just cheaper than having well, it like us the driveways. Do it. Yeah, exactly. There are aprons, whatever. Yeah, so yeah. for sure. That well, will, that will that conclude the yeah. manager's report. Yeah. Thank you. Manager's Ed. report. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We have no old business. Under new business, we have a recommendation that the village board of trustees approve the resolution to award the contract for the Rivers View Drive reconstruction and culvert replacement <laughs> project to Alliance Contractors, Inc. of Woodstock, Illinois, in the amount of $776,142.56. I'd need a motion. I'll motion. A second. Motion, Kevin, second. Ginger, any discussion? I know Ed just presented the whole thing to us and we asked questions then, so. Uh, if not, uh, Acting Secretary, would you call the roll? Trustee Stevens. Yes. Trustee Humphreys. Yes. Trustee Savvy. Yes. Trustee Rayburn. Yes. Trustee Schultz. Yes. Trustee Burroway. Yes. Okay, we're ready for trustee reports. Uh, we'll start today with Pat. Okay, so that this is trustee slash staff report? <laughs> we can do both, right? <laughs> Committee report? <Yeah>. Consolidation. <laughs> you skipped That's over. Nice. It's fine, Ed. It, I don't have a whole lot. Thanks. Um, I did, I wanted to read something to the board. Um, if I, uh, you know, as we, you know, we had the slide the city, and uh, it got a little rained out. And but I think uh, the residents looked like they were having a ball. And Jeff, you, we saw you. I was all over that. Place. <laughs> I know we <laughs> saw you, so I couldn't catch you. Um, but uh, actually, I think it went really well. And I uh, did reach out to the folks that uh, uh, own the franchise, and I wanted to read back the uh, email. Uh, that I got so I had just asked her um, you know how things went uh, ticket sales um, you know working with staff committee you know and this is what she said 
Um, Carpentersville was an amazing event. The hill was perfect, the people were great, we had zero complaints. The village of Carpentersville was by far one of the best villages we have worked with. The staff and yourself were, were great to work with. Also the police and firemen did a great job keeping our events safe. Our ticket sales were around 1,200, which is a good event for us, and it was a pleasure working with the village and yourself, she said. So, and it sounds like they might want to come back. So, which is really, really nice to hear. Um, just a little aside, uh, Bob and I, uh, it seems like we're spending all our time in the park these days, but uh, the Civil War uh, pres unit president came down, and he also just mentioned to us as in conversation that it has been so wonderful to work with this village. The obstacles have not been great, and that <laughs> at, even though he lives there, he said, there's a part of me that thinks I'd like to just let Lombard go and just concentrate on Carpentersville. So, and Lombard is the second or third largest uh, uh, reenactment in the state. So, um, it was just a passing conversation. I don't think he's going to, but, so I, I just wanted to say, and you know, we'll talk after all these events are done, but the support of the board, the support of the staff, it's really paying off. And you know, the staff has been wonderful. You know, Melissa was up here talking again about uh, public works and the police department and fire. So everybody's on board to help. I think we're all on the same page. We want them to be a success and it's, it's reflecting in the village. So, and um, other than that, we had special event committee meetings. And a couple of them, we had a special one last night just dedicated to wrap up some loose ends because we've got uh, uh, just a few days before uh, the upcoming Civil War event. Um, we've got some uh, volunteers. Ginger put out the call for some more. Um, and uh, the park, I just got a, a little bit of a schedule. It's just a snapshot, but uh, laid out where all the camps will be. Bob's got everything laid out as far as the stage. I think we're comfortable with the parking. I think, I think things are gonna go really smoothly. Weather is really looking like it's in our favor now. Um, I will mention Ginger and I ran after Slide the City to the Lombard, and I don't think I've ever sweat so much. It was so <laughs> hot that day. And we had a park in the back 40, so to speak, and I think we're looking at maybe low 80s. And uh, that lady wouldn't saying. give us a ride in the golf cart. Yeah, I can't exactly, believe I exactly. But it was, it was fun to see. I, I'd never been to one, and we only got there in time for one last battle. Um, and uh, you know, the cannons were roaring and the smoke was everywhere. They have a big pond, they have Civil War boats that actually they'd like to use uh, if they come back next year and they would probably kick off the event coming up the dam, which would be kind of nice. So they're full of ideas and I've said that before and they're, they're just so happy things are going well. Our uh, drama club is doing uh, rehearsals at the stage as we speak, dress rehearsal on Friday. Um, so things are uh, going well, and uh, food vendors, I think, are everything set up, and that should be good, and we've got an info booth, we'll have a volunteer table, we're offering a free uh, sandwich to our volunteers, because uh, we're grateful for their help for the parking. So, Paul, line up for your little voucher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already, and, I already uh, got my orders from Bob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I'm trying to think what else, there's just, there's so much, <coughs> my head is just full. Um, uh, the Moose Lodge uh, will be having that pancake breakfast. Um, they've been offered the Public Works building. We'll have some signage, uh, that's eight to 11 on Sunday. Sunday. $7 for a breakfast and it's pancakes and sausage and bacon and all the stuff you can possibly drink. So I encourage everyone to go. Um, and then uh, the Historical Society, I've uh, kind of been working a little bit with them. They put together some really nice uh, bo um, poster boards. I encourage everyone to stop because I didn't realize the 52nd Regiment, uh, we have a lot of people from the Dundee area that uh, were lost in the Civil War. There's a monument in that cemetery on 31 to them. And they do a cemetery walk in that. So she pulled that up and then uh, the Pillars of Freedom are going to do a flag display over by a war memorial, which won't involve the, uh, uh, the guys in their camps. Um, it, and uh, on those flags, as they've done in the past where they put a name, it'll be some of our local folks that have passed. So it'll be a kind of a cross-reference kind of thing. So uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. They've got a, a full schedule. Lincoln impersonator, we saw him. 
So he was great there. And uh, uh, we have a pie eating contest on Sunday. First 10 entrants. Uh, you have to be over 18. No utensils. It's face in the pie <laughs> kind of thing. So, and Rotary Club has got a prize. Uh, for it, so it should take about 10, 15 minutes. And I was teasing, I, Me and I mentioned to John Paul there asking if an ambulance should be close by. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they'll be fine though. But uh, anyway, so I know our police department will be in the area, you know, I mean, I don't think they'll be walking the park, but I think they'll be right there in the area, our fire department. Bob's come up with a clever idea for more parking on Carpenter, including some uh, extra handicaps. So. I think after all this time of talking about it, I think we got it. So, and I think it'll be good. And I think uh, I just wanted to say um, after hearing about Slide the City and hearing all of the things from the guys there, I, the village is just really doing a great job as far as welcoming events. And, uh, you know, stay tuned. We got some great ideas coming up. So, uh, there might be some more things in the future. So, and that would conclude my. Oh, and I, I did want to say I was out. Uh, for a few minutes out at uh, National Night Out seemed like a really nice event. So it was nice to move it over there. It seems a lot bigger. And so I'm sorry. No, no. Finish, finish up. Oh. Mark was just oh. making a comment. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. And that I was going to say that concludes my report. So. <laughs> and yeah, uh, unfortunately, I I jumped over the uh, trustee the, report. Uh, committee, committee report. report. So <laughs> when it comes your turn for your trustee report, if you will just roll your committee report right in. And so that would mean <laughs> you can give us your committee report and your trustee report at the same time. And if I could, I forgot to recognize Bob Cole for the community development, Mark Huber and Bob, and then with public safety came with a recommendation I've signed off and I want the board to know it and the folks at home. Carpenter Boulevard will be a one way street on Saturday and Sunday so they can get an additional almost 60 parking. 60 oh. cars parked right near the park and <coughs> Bob's south or north on the one way north to south, north mm -hmm. to south okay the victors oh. get the direction. right that puts your you can put right. your parking spots on the park side of the street <laughs> the then, right yeah. got it that so makes sense. An angle. and in addition to that uh, at the request of the committee and and trustee Schultz we coordinated That's with right. Mark's got as well as my good relations with the school district and we approved that IGA for that parking. Kevin Gray's got a longstanding um, mm -hmm. connection with Cross Container. Right. They've offered up the parking. We've got parking at the Public Works Garage for the reenactors right. and even Tom Roser uh, volunteered, you know, to let us go ahead and use the parking at our request near Comcast for the reenactors. Yeah, for the reenactors that come, the equipment will be at uh, public, works, public works, all of their equipment, yeah. And, uh, and so there's just me. been a lot of cooperation. There, there has been wonderful cooperation. I'm sorry, I have one little quick thing to mention. There will be a notice that went out, Mark approved, uh, Ginger and Denise put it together. Uh, they will be walking the local uh, houses around the park just to let them know that there'll be a lot of noise for that weekend. And so just, just to give them a heads up so that, you know, Mike doesn't get a lot of calls you know what's going on because it I've never been to one and when you've got two cannons going at each other and the muskets and everything else out, so it, it was really loud so Ginger was flinching a lot <laughs> so, so I hope so there's some wind that day otherwise that gun gunfire and smoke will just hang right there yeah. in one spot yeah this exactly works. so know that it came from the yeah so the dogs and small children yes. as well. Yeah. Be aware. Yeah, they will be aware. So everyone will get a notice around the, the neighborhood then. Do you, so. uh, Pat, do you think uh, kids should wear earplugs to this event? Or is, is it that loud? Or no, is I actually today. You know what? I would bring them and just take them out if you're not going to use them. I yeah, agree. Yeah. I mean, I know I thought our park looked a little smaller than Lombard. I, I mentioned it today. And, and um, actually, there, there's a big flat spot that they use for their soccer fields. It just went up today. So their, their reenactment area, because there'll be sutlers that sell to the reenactors, there are big tents in that, but the actual space around their pond is actually much smaller than our park. Our park is bigger to accommodate them, which is why they're so excited. Oh. And today he told us they're looking at maybe upwards of 200 reenactors that want to come to the park alone. So typically, the show. typically they get about 40, he said, 40 to 45. And who's going to win the war? 
I don't know. Because <laughs> I think tuned. I think the last the last battle, Paul, on Sunday is for the um, control of Carpenter Park. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh -oh. The 52nd Illinois Regiment has home turf advantage. I yeah. Think, uh. <laughs> so, All thank right. you, Ed. So, Don? No, no betting allowed. Oh, uh, <clears throat> commission reports, uh, nothing much to no betting. Uh, yeah. uh, say about that except that Quadcom will be coming up here uh, August 24th. Uh, we're kind of on a little hiatus from uh, <clears throat> Jelkies Creek because of vacations and such, so we're not going to meet again until. September sometime. Uh, as far as trustee reports, uh, yeah, I too was at the uh, Slide the City. I thought it was a great event, uh, well managed. Uh, it looked like everybody, like you said, Pat, was having a great time. Uh, and uh, had vendors down there at the bottom of the hill, and it was it was really neat. I took a lot of pictures. Uh, my wife wanted to see it because she was working, and I took a lot of pictures for her and. Everybody was smiling. I saw Jeff there. Um, I wish I could have participated, but uh, it was just too hot and the air was too heavy for that. But it was a, a great time. It was had by all, I think. And uh, I'm glad it went off so smooth. Nobody got hurt. There was no emergencies or anything like that. I know the weather did interrupt a little bit, but uh, <coughs> I was wondering if that was going to happen. But uh, your people, uh, Chief, were right on top of it. They were monitoring that all day long, so it was really great. It was really great. Um, and thank you to the, uh, all the guys that participated in that. I seen that you went down the slide there, Chief. I did. Huh? I did? Yeah. I didn't Where's see that video? That? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't in uniform, so. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're hiding. Incognito. <laughs> So with great the one piece, so all, and one I, piece, piece bathing suit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fast these, uh, <laughs> these are exciting. Fast? These are exciting times in the village of Carpentersville, and uh, <clears throat> I just want to <clears throat> say a couple of things about the the map that you showed up there and how um, when I first got on the board or right after that uh, we did a a, a road. Uh, uh, I don't know what do you call it a test or a road scan or what yes and it was uh, all red or just about of it it was all red you remember that uh, the, the, the road study oh my gosh it was it was like oh my god we got all of that and where are we going to get the funds and the meetings at the at the uh, audit and finance committee and, and but we had to get on top of this because some sections were just were, were just brutal, uh, especially over there uh, across 25, over there north of Hazard and, and south of Hazard over there. And uh, it was just, uh, I remember my mother-in-law had a big hole in the middle of the road there and uh, uh, had to call somebody in to get some emergency gravel in there. Uh, but now we see the progress and see how we're on top of it and how we're able to save money in, 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 with the bonds that goes right into the capital improvements fund and to continue on in this. And like the mayor said, uh, uh, where we can get to a point where it's just maintenance and not, not grinding all the time and replacing uh, foot uh, <coughs> footings and stuff like that. So uh, we got a ways to go, but really it just uh, it's amazing. It's amazing uh, that we've we've come this far and did it in a financially responsible way, and that's good. That's thank you. That's all I have. I just have a couple of things to say. I I too went to uh, slide the city. I didn't participate, although it was hot enough, oh. and I was really tempted. <laughs> but Pat and I were together, and we were going to go down to the Lombard Civil War reenactment, so I couldn't go down there dripping wet I although I don't know why because once we got down there we were dripping yeah. wet anyway <laughs> true enough that was that was really a brutal yeah. day down yeah. there uh, but we did celebrate on the way back with root beer floats yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, quenched our thirst um, and we did go to the Lombard thing and it was um, you know when I 
when I look back at it from where we were standing, we were standing on the other side of the pond or the river or whatever. It was, it was a huge pond. And they had a boat that had a bunch of guys in them and, it, and they just kind of kept going around and around and then they finally docked and, yeah. and got off and helped in the skirmish. But, um, and I kept thinking, I, I try, was trying to compare that to Carpenter Park and I think, I think our people will be a lot closer to to the action uh. than what we were. I, I felt like it was pretty far away. I did take um, a, a two minute, two and a half minute video of it, and uh, y you could barely see the guys. Uh, you could see the smoke coming out of their muskets and stuff. And then when the cannons went off, you know, a big cloud. Um, and they did have some horses that were running up and down the hillside, and then they had. Um, women in their long dresses running with uh, baskets of like bandages and stuff to help the wounded and so y you would kind of see them w when the when the guns stopped mm -hmm. they'd run over to the guy and pretend they were doing something so but it was it was a quite a distance away so i think that our p our um, reenactment will be so much more I, I don't want to say hands-on, but I think you'll feel like you're almost mm -hmm. hands-on because mm -hmm. I think you'll be a lot closer. So it should be um, it should be pretty exciting. Um, and Ginger, just so you know, the embalmer will not be in carpet. I know well. the embalmer. Yeah, <laughs> I took a picture. They had a, a dead guy laying on the table, and um, the the doctor was telling people this is what they would do, you know, back in the day, how to you know they how to treat the wounded and then what to do with the, the dead guys. Um, we didn't stay at that one very long. We just kind of kept moving. <laughs> yeah. Air conditioning was calling. Yeah. Um, and for our reenactment, which is the, um, the, the, the reenactors will start coming in on Thursday at some point and setting up. So for anybody living around Carpenter Park, when you see people start camping, uh, setting up tents in the park, <laughs> And, and they are going to sleep in the tents in the park. Um, so that will start happening on Thursday. I'm taking Friday off, so we'll, kind of, we'll be around the park you know, <coughs> helping get things going. Um, Bob got me another golf cart this year uh, for this event. So um, I may be in a dress, a long, <laughs> hot dress oh, in the golf cart, but we'll see. So we still need a few more volunteers. We've got a few, but we still would like to have some more. Um, feel free to email Bob at bcole, C-O-L-E, at seville.org. Um, and, and when we ask for volunteers, it'll be to help with the parking. They'll, we've got a lot of signs coming for parking. So if you're coming to the event, look for the signs, follow the arrows. Uh, there's a place for the reenactors to park. There's a place for volunteers to park. There's places for handicapped people to park. And then there's places for everybody else to park. So follow the signs. Um, the volunteers were looking for two to three hour shifts apiece uh, throughout the two days, the Saturday and the Sunday, between 10 and 4. I don't think on Sunday we're going to need anybody late in the afternoon. Um, Sunday morning probably between 10 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. 10 and 2 on Sunday. And just remember, you'll get a, uh, anybody that volunteers will get a little coupon to um, go and get some free food on us for, for helping <coughs> volunteer. Thank you. If I volunteer, can I wear a long, hot dress, too? Sure. Okay. They're, uh, they're out in the car. <laughs> oh, you'll have to you shave. You can come pick yours. I have to shave? Yeah. Well, all that. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes my report. Paul? Do I have to go if he's wearing a dress? No. <laughs> <laughs> We got one for you too. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, uh, first, for a business development commission, um, just want to go through our meeting from July 26th uh, that we had. Uh, we're putting together that, or I should say, our um, uh, community development team, Patrick Burke, is putting together the uh, new business directory and kind of some stats I thought you guys would be interested in. There's about 385 businesses in Carpentersville, and about a third of them are home based. So I thought that was pretty an interesting stat. All of those will be included in this uh, uh, in this directory. So uh, we're testing the app right now, getting the information on 
well, uh, getting it ready so that people, uh, the business owners, can populate the directory. We'll have oversight of what they do. If we need to take something down that's inappropriate, we'll have that ability to do that. Um, but mostly we're hoping that the businesses will pick that up and be able to use that to, uh, you know, launch into their website or to specials that they have or whatever, however they can use it. So well, pretty they, excited. Are they going to, would they consider sending a letter to every business to well, let that's them how we're know? Gonna have, how we're going to handle it. Uh, a lot of the businesses mm -hmm. know about it already, oh, so, okay. but uh, we're, we are reaching out. We do have okay. a list that we'll reach out and uh, mm -hmm. provide them and ask them to, yeah. you know, fix their site or uh, yeah. improve it or put information that they think is necessary. And almost all the businesses are on the e-biz and they get oh, regular okay. bulletins oh, from the right. village, okay. so okay. I'm sure they'll hear about that. Gotcha. There. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. <coughs> um, there was, I mentioned it last time, there was a uh, profile done at Carpentersville from a business perspective. It's called In Focus. Ed did this with uh, Pat Burke. And uh, we're just waiting for that to come out, and that'll get posted to the website. So once it's released, once we get the, uh, I think we've seen a draft of what they're going to write, uh, but it hasn't been published yet. So once we get that, we'll make that available to everybody. Uh, Patrick talked about a couple of the businesses that he's been to in town, uh, OxyTech and uh, KD Industries, and just went over what each one does. And it's, it's nice. He's getting out to as many businesses as he can. And I, think, I know he takes Ed with him on occasion uh, to go out and meet me. and yeah. find out, yes, and yeah. Pat too, uh, find out what's going on, any, any concerns, uh, complaints, things like that. So um, that, you know, that was something that we discussed. And then um, just you know, a couple of the businesses that are coming to town, I'm sure you've heard of them. Um, on the board, Southern Bells, we've received some uh, plat work for there, or the, what they intend to do with that space with the old China Buffet. Uh, so hopefully we'll get that ironed out and they'll be able to move in. Um, and then the old Rosati's building looks like that'll be raised and uh, could have a Jersey Mike's in there with maybe a mattress uh, store as okay. well. So still very up, you know, we're, we're waiting to finalize these, but a couple new businesses that will be uh, coming to town. Um, because there's five Tuesdays in August uh, to accommodate uh, vacation schedules, we're going to move our next meeting to August 30th, the fifth uh, Tuesday, so that uh, we can have a quorum for our Business Development Commission. Uh, and it'll be at 5 o'clock on the 30th of August on the second floor um, of, of this building. Um, so that's all I have uh, for business development and um, really I'm just very pleased with how things are going uh, in the village with the street uh, you know replacements the street repairs uh, the overlays the cost of them uh, the audit report came out um, another great audit report one finding um, which compared to you know you've heard me many times talk about four or five pages of findings that we had 10, 11 years ago. We have one now and uh, won an award again for our budget by the GFOA. I mean, that right there is huge. I mean, that's, that's two years in a row now we've gotten that award and our budget does tell a story and, uh, and it's paying off for us now. There's a lot of good information in there. Uh, just how that department runs, department by department, um, things that they've accomplished, things, goals that they've set. Uh, so it's just, it's very nice to see all this come together, so. Actually, you know, Paul, the auditor, I, I don't know, Ed, if you thought that after all these years. He was up there, but it seemed like he was done and nothing flat. Yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah. Honest to gosh, Paul, what a difference. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Compared to three hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just going uh, over the internal controls. Yeah, it was just amazing. Was any questions? And he sat down. I was like, "Wow, what, yeah. a, what a difference!" Yeah, so. yeah. We've come not, wasn't it, even that serious. That, that's yeah. not from a, a lack of uh, effort on their oh, part no. either, because you know we, we we switched auditors actually not too long ago just to get a second set of eyes on things right. too. So it's not that it's not that he was only up there for 20 minutes exactly. because they're just you know t yeah. copying their audit from last year. This is from uh, you know they've had one previous year of experience, but that was it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, and they're looking at everything. They're looking yeah. at water and sewer, uh, oh, yeah. you know, funds in Set detail, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked a, a little bit about the <coughs> bonds that have been refinanced. Part of those bonds that were refinanced were the ones that brought us the uh, turbines for the uh, for dealing with the cake, you know, and the, oh, uh, the oh, waste yeah. that we received. And so uh, we saved money there, too. So I'll, if I get a chance, I'll call Doug Marks and let him know. But... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, because Doug was a pretty instrumental in yeah, that, making sure that we did the right thing there. But uh, but it's it's nice to see that. So um, yeah. just very pleased with the, how things are going and looking forward to this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So we put a lot of effort into it. So let's keep our fingers crossed the weather is uh, so uh, far cooperative. So far, so good. Yeah, looks good. So with that, I'm, I'm done. That's all I have. Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, I wanted to... Uh, put a thank you to the police and fire departments. We had a block party in my neighborhood right over here this weekend. And for any other residents who are having a block party, all you have to do is come to the village. They will give you a permit to fill out. There's no cost. And you let the public works know, you let the police know, you let the fire know. They make sure everything is set up. Uh, they delivered the signs to block the road and everything. And then the police and fire come out. The, the fire department, you know, they always have stuff for the kids. They let the kids climb on the trucks and show them everything. And then they actually even pulled out the hose and let the kids, like, shoot the hose. And it was, I mean, there was a line. They were there having a ball. So thank you to both of your departments for, for coming out for that. Um, Slide the City was, I thought, a tremendous success. Everybody, you know, my neighborhood is right there, and nobody complained about the parking or the traffic. Everybody was, was really happy with it. It was really easy to get to the event, well, especially for us, because we live right there. But, um, and and the, the police and the fire did an excellent job making sure everybody was safe. Um, I wanted to say a special thank you to two of the residents. Uh, Chris Evolo lives in our neighborhood, and he uh, came out with a golf cart and helped usher some of the, the older people up and down the hill. People were having trouble because it's, it's a big hill to get back up. He also brought out a generator and uh, a fan for the police officer who was at the top of the hill just because it was so hot, and he's sitting there in full, <laughs> full equipment and set that up for him to try to, to keep him cool. That was, that was very nice. And then another resident, Ray O'Brien, who lives in our neighborhood, bought 10 extra tickets and handed them out to kids who wanted to go and, and, and couldn't afford it. And, and it turned out, you know, this was a lot more affordable than I thought it was going to be, and especially, you know, they had Groupons and things at the end. But, uh, yeah, we had residents who were going above and beyond and helping people out and had lots of kids out there. And, I mean, it, it just turned out to be a great day. And it did get cut a little bit short, but, I mean, it still went till almost 5.30, and, and that was uh, – Nobody seemed too upset. I think people were worn out from walking up the hill at that point. <laughs> so, And then last, uh, National Night Out, I thought was a big success out here tonight. We had a great turnout. Um, the, a lot of the local churches and organizations, the Boys and Girls Club were out here. Uh, Chief Kilborn and I were both in the dunk tank. <laughs> and uh, But uh, it, that, it was a great night out, and it was great that people come out and seek to actually get to interact with our police and our fire instead of uh, all the bad stuff that's going on right now. So, thank you. Uh, yeah, we had our uh, Audit and Finance Commission meeting on Thursday, July 28th at the Public Works Facility, and as uh, Trustee Hunsberg mentioned, we had our uh, annual comprehensive annual financial report review with, with the auditor, uh, and it was, it was a glowing uh, review. Uh, only one comment on it. Uh, he did say that they issued an unmodified opinion, which is the highest designation that they as auditors can give the village, which is fantastic. One minor adjustment in the water and sewer uh, ledger. Uh, no material weaknesses found. No significant deficiencies or comments were given, which is fantastic. That's, uh, that's really a, a great story, Paul. You mentioned that the budget tells a story. It's a very positive story. It's, it's a very transparent story. Residents who want to know where their tax dollars are going within the village uh, have that opportunity to do that and know that the, the information is correct. No journal entries. Yeah. <laughs> no journal entries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the, uh, uh, the GFOA award, too, uh, Trustee Alfred mentioned that that's the second year in a row. It's fa that's uh, fantastic news as well. Um, some of the other things that, that uh, we discussed at the meeting, the meeting was over three hours. That auditor's presentation, as you, as you said, it was probably only a half hour long. Uh, the rest of the time we talked about the White Oaks Detention Basin, what we're going to do in that neighborhood. We sort of talked through the plan <coughs> a little bit more, and the bottom line hasn't changed. 
uh, we need to make sure that the basin is fixed to the resident's satisfaction regardless of uh, what what that does to the cost. Of course, it has to be a reasonable solution, but um, I'm positive that there's a, a middle ground and staff has indicated that, that we're on the right path to establishing that middle ground where everyone's going to be happy and, and the issue will finally be resolved. So that's good. Uh, we received an update on the Emerald Ash Borer Tree Program. That's going well. Uh, we discussed if we should put additional funds into the program to wrap it up or where, where we're at now. So there'll be a little more information on that forthcoming where we're at. But uh, <laughs> as a whole, staff has done an excellent job cleaning up the village and getting the trees down that, that were dying dead or uh, on, on the path to, to dying and uh, utilizing as many grants and external funds as possible to get that done, working with all the HOAs, everything that you'd expect uh, the, the staff to do uh, if they're on, on the ball, that's what they've been doing. So it's good to see. Uh, we also talked about water, uh, water and sewer rates uh, what we wanted to do there, the commission issued a recommendation of a half a percent increase for the water rate and a half a percent increase for the sewer rate. Uh, so, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a no increase, but a half a percent is something that uh, it, 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 it's below inflation, uh, number one. And number two, it, it keeps us from getting back into a pattern where we lock rates and then all of a sudden we're behind and we have to play catch up and there are these double digit increases, which we're seeing in all of the communities around us, by the way. Uh, Commission member um, Brad McFaggin uh, mentioned that Algonquin just doubled their water raters in the process of doubling their water rate. Uh, you know, th that has such a huge impact on the, not only the residents, but the, the businesses there too. <coughs> the businesses use a lot of water. If you're a car wash in Algonquin, what are you going to do now? One of your biggest expenses just doubled. Uh, you know, so steward, financial stewardship is very important with that fund, uh, and, and the commission recognizes that, and then we spent quite a bit of time talking about the pros and cons of going in either direction, what we can do there. Uh, we also discussed at length the Meadowdale Water Tower. Um, it turns out that that, that uh, rather iconic member of the community has about 60 years left for um, which is it, Baxter and Woodman? Or are they the ones that did that? Or the engineering. They yeah. had a subcontractor look, look yeah. at it, but it probably has a 60 year life. 60 year life, but the tank itself is a very dated design. It doesn't utilize the full uh, storage capacity of it. It's really only the middle third, I would say, of the, of the tank that is, is usable or preferable water. So we discussed some options of getting some equipment in there that will cycle the water through and, uh, and make it a, a fully usable water tower. That was an interesting conversation uh, to see what we could do there. We also discussed maybe the possibility of adding another water tower and uh, taking that one down and using that for commercial space, something to piggyback off of Walmart. Um, it's all just discussion, no recommendations for that is, but you know, all, the, all these ideas have to be vetted out and it all starts at the Audit and Finance Commission. Um, beyond that, we discussed property tax rates, uh, the pension situation, that's a perpetual conversation for an audit and finance commission of any governing body. Uh, and we also discussed the home rule sales tax and, and uh, where we're at with that and what we might want to do in the future with it. So it was a very uh, productive meeting. Uh, the, the commission members, everybody uh, contributed. <coughs> very, very fruitful conversation. Good, good meeting. Uh, that concludes my report. Well, uh, several things that uh, happened in the last couple weeks. Uh, one, I got a call from a local business, uh, not quite knowing what it was because normally Terry, the village clerk, gets phone calls and then she relays and she wasn't in, so somebody else fielded the call and they said, this, this guy wants, to come, wants you to come out and talk to him. And I don't know why he wants you. So, you know, you never quite know. And I won't say which business it is because when I got there, the discussion was about expanding his business, in fact, doubling the size of his business. And he was asking me questions about uh, different things that could be done. And of course, I can't really give him answers on that, but I gave him the names of who to talk to, you know, if he wants to expand his business and 
They'll come and do a walkthrough if he requests it and say, here's what you need to do, here's the expenses you could run into, and so forth and so on. But then we just started talking, and it turned out that he had previously had a business in Chicago. I said, well, what's the difference between Chicago and here? And he said, the police. The police here actually help me. They'll come in if I have, you know, shoplifters, whatever. They're there. They've helped me a number of times, and I really appreciate the work. He said, when I was in Chicago, I'd call and say, you know, something went wrong in my store. They'd come two days later, and they'd get mad at me for bothering, the, bothering them with a call. The life is so different in Carpentersville, and the staff and everybody has been so good. You know, I said, wow. That's good. I hope you do expand your business, uh, and I'm pretty sure he will. He's already made arrangements to get a second half that's as big as his first half. But I, that was just one of those things that you pick up where somebody just on his own volunteers how good things have been for him as a businessman here in Carpentersville. I also got to go down to the county fair every year. They have a ribbon cutting, and so I go down there and represent Carpentersville, and get to meet some of the other village presidents, and there's a bunch of people from the county board. So it's one of those times you kind of meet and greet and talk to the local representatives and maybe put a little bug in their ear about something we need here in Carpenters. Well, it's just one of those things you do. Uh, West Dundee did have a, a speed bicycle race, women's division, men's division, kids' division, and I know I, I don't represent West Dundee, but it was a really fun event. I went there and watched it. And if they have it again next year, which I think they will because the people really liked it, it was a good event. And, I, you know, we should work regionally. If they do stuff that's nice, we should say it. Uh, then I got a chance to go to Dundee Crown High School and talk to uh, two government classes. There were about 35 kids in each class. And talk to them about where does our money come from, where does it go, what services do we do, that sort of thing. So they, they learned a lot about uh, village government. And I have to say, you know, this was not anything they were going to be tested on. It was just additional material. And I thought for sure, you know, I'd have to, have to wake some kids up and stuff. But they were so attentive, and they were asking good questions. They really wanted to know more about Carpentersville. They didn't know about Slide the City. I asked you know, of, the, of the kids, of the 70 kids that were in there, only three were not from Carpentersville. So it was all Carpentersville kids. When I told them about Slide the City and I told them about the, the community garage sale and I told them about the reenactment, it was like, wow, Carpentersville has all of that? You know, these, are, these are sophomores and freshmen, so they don't read the newspaper or stuff like that. I, are, are you in the government class up there? No, okay, we get, we get government students up here every so now and then, but you looked a little bit young, but you did look like one of the kids in the class. So I, let's see if you, you, don't tell how boring I was. Oh, cool. but, but I don't have to do that. But Eagle, Scout. Eagle Scout, okay, oh, there we great. go. Oh, but anyway, I, I'll continue. But th that was a, a real nice opportunity to let kids know where our money comes from, where it goes. And the services that we provide, they didn't, you know, like garbage service. They, they had no idea who took care of garbage service. Uh, <laughs> Foxview has a real nice event coming up this Friday. It's, it's a back-to-school day, and they, have, they give out school supplies. They have food. They have refreshments. And it's not, I don't think, limited just to Foxview children. If you have a school-aged child, uh, you can go over there and get some free school supplies and get a, a hot dog and some popcorn and a, and a, and a snow cone. It's, uh, what, 12 to 3 on 12, Friday? I think it is 12 yeah. to 12, 3. 1, 1 to 3. 1 to, one three? to 3? Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know. I wrote it down wrong on my book then. But that's a nice event, and uh, you could get a chance to see what a nice place Fox U is. That, that's a place that, unfortunately, and I told that to the kids. I said, you know, we have some places in town that unfairly get branded by what they were 25 years ago. And I said, one of them is Foxview. And the girl said, I, I live in Foxview. I said, are you afraid for your life every time you walk out of here? No, it's nice down there. People are all friendly with each other. And, and on and on, she started gushing about what a nice place Foxview was. I didn't even solicit that one. But that's the kind of things that happen in Carpentersville that upset you, is that 
20 years ago, people probably did fear for their lives down there, but they don't anymore. The police have done a wonderful job down there. Right, Chief? I mean, I'm not speaking out of turn. Oh, 20 years ago, it was a different... Uh, it was a totally different animal. But that reputation still sits there, and it, it's very frustrating to me. Uh, an interesting thing about Slide the City, we didn't give them the water. They had the, It was metered water, and Bob, how quick did they pay? Two days? Within, Within a, day. a day, they got to check in. That's the kind of people you like to do business with. Uh, you know, because we helped in some ways, but we didn't give them stuff. So it was a metered service, and so that was nice. And then finally, Pat and I went to the White Oak subdivision. They've had some ongoing problems with drainage there. They have a little drainage pond that fills up, and it covered with algae and uh, a lot of problems with it and we kind of went on a fact finding and talked to the residents about what could be done and I think our, our engineering department and our public works have got a plan <laughs> to address this and they were happy to hear that uh, we would take care of it as best we could and I think Bob you've already started in on some of the work to get that done you drain the pond to see what the bottom was like and you think it's going to be fixable yeah. right pretty sure I don't want to put words yes, in your mouth, yes, it but is. It is. yeah. So it, it's one of those problems that sometimes people have problems and we're here to solve problems, not to make them worse. So with that, uh, I'll conclude my remarks. Uh, President Ritter? Yes, sir. The Fox Street venue is from noon to, I double checked, it's from noon to three. Noon to three, that's what I had written down that. on yeah. my, that's what I had written down on my calendar, thank you. Double check, yeah. Noon to three. Uh, so we need to have a closed session. It's section 2C1 and 2C11 of the Open Meetings Act. I need a motion for that. Motion. Motion, motion Ginger. I'll second. second. Jeff, uh, will you call the roll there, acting Everybody. clerk? Yes. yes. Yeah. Trustee Humper. Yes. Trustee Sabi. Yes. Trustee Rayburn. Yes. Trustee Shope. Yes. Trustee Burroway. Yes. Trustee Stevens. Yes. Uh, adjourned to closed session and to reconvene.